two students and warning the principal of the college called and said, see, there were many students, 100 plus students in the mathematics stream, but there are only two people, you and the other person in the biological sciences. We want to scrap this course. Either you change to the mathematics stream or else you go and join in a different college. I thought for a moment and that dream was there very much in my heart. I said, sir, I will not join any other college and I will also not go to the mathematics stream. I would like to pursue this biological sciences. Somehow, God had mercy upon me. The principal obliged and continued with two students. You know, after a few months, three more students joined. So with five students, he continued, you know, 11th and 12th standard. And by God's grace, at the end of that one, I was the one who got into the medical college. When the Lord gives a dream for your life, you know, the Lord will be able to make a way. And the Lord also will grant the necessary resources and the wisdom from above so that you will be able to see the fulfillment of the purpose and the dream that the Lord has upon your life. Life is precious and life also has a purpose because we are created by God. Having the purpose, having a dream in your heart is not sufficient. We need the passion and we also need to have this perseverance to be able to see the dream coming into a reality. It was our late president, Abdul Kalam, who said, it is not just enough that you have dreams, but the dreams that you have, you know, make you and should cause you to have sleepless nights so that you'll be able to achieve the dream that you had. We need the passion to be able to pursue the dream that we have and the purpose. And we also need to have the perseverance so that ultimately we'll be able to see the fulfillment of the dream and the purpose that God has placed upon your life. And let me recall an incident that happened in my life. I finished my MBBS and I finished my internship. And during those days, you know, it was a common practice you know, every student who comes out of the medical college, you know, if you ask anyone, you know, especially from the college where I graduated, their dream and the aspiration is to go to America. So during those times, you had to go either to Singapore or to Bangkok to write the examination, you know, in order to go to America. So I also pursued that one. I went to Bangkok to write the examination and somehow after going to Bangkok in the year 97-98, I fell ill, you know, I was so sick when I went there. I was not able to write the examination properly and I finally was not able to clear the examination. Till that point of time, I was so, you know, I was a topper, I was very much, you know, an accomplished person in my academics, I was not able to take this failure. I was so discouraged and I was so depressed and I was not sure what to do next. And that was the time the Lord has intervened and the Lord started encouraging me, you should continue to pursue the dreams. And somehow, as I was waiting upon the Lord, I felt that it's not the Lord's will for me. And therefore, I started the preparation. And, you know, I pursued the post-graduation here in India itself. We need perseverance to be able to see the dream and the purpose to become a reality. Someone said, failure is not a person. It is just an event. You know, as we move into this journey of life, as you pursue and move forward, there might be seasons of darkness, there might be times where you are not able to clear the examination that is okay. There is a time you will be able to rise up. There is a time where the times and the good seasons will come back and you will be able to continue to walk in the dream the Lord has placed upon your life. Passion plus perseverance is grit. And that will take you to an altitude which you will never be able to expect. 
Life is precious. Life has a purpose. And life also needs passion and perseverance. And finally, when I look back at my life, is there something which made a dramatic turn around in my life? I recollect when I was 19 years old, I had an encounter with Christ Jesus. And I can confidently say that encounter that I had with Christ Jesus when I was 19 years old has given a new meaning, has given a new definition for my life. I was able to get this, the meaning of life, life eternal. I was able to know the real purpose. I was able to find the passion to move forward and the Lord also has given me the perseverance that changed my life. I'm sure when we come to Christ, he will make a difference even with your life. When we commit this small life that we have, not knowing what is going to happen tomorrow, but committing into the hands of the Creator, committing in a short span of life, He can make something beautiful out of this life. Because the Bible says, the God of the Bible says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And that is what the God of the Bible can do when you commit your life into his hands. And finally, as you step out into the new, you know, future, you know, stepping out into the new area and the new future of our life, I would like to leave this blessing upon your life. It is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he turn his face towards you and give you peace. And this is my prayer as you graduate and move forward. You will find the meaning of life and find life eternal. And you will understand that life is precious. It has a purpose and it requires passion and perseverance. And when we come to the Creator, Christ, He will grant all these things. Thank you, and God bless. Have a blessed future. Thank you, sir, for your significant words of enrichment for our outgoing students. Barbara Caldrose has said, the beauty of empowering others is that your own power is not diminished in the process. You have inspired us indeed. God's sovereignty is an essential aspect of who he is and that he has supreme authority and absolute power over all things. And yes, he is very active despite our perplexity. This is the central theme of the special number, Christ Above All, written by Mindjaji Valencia and rendered to us by Annie Monica and Clementina. Against obstacles so hard, but here we are today, standing by your side. The journey is but partly done, ahead of us more challenges to come. But we know we can survive the time, cause Christ above all. 
Thank you, Thank you, Annie, Annie and Clementina, Clementina for that special, special number. A revered man, man of great faith, faith, the driving, the driving force, force of all ministerial, ministerial initiatives, initiatives of the Karnataka Central Diocese and a perennial font of inspiration to many. Goodwills is fortunate to have at its helm our spiritual mentor, guide and teacher, the Right Reverend Dr. Prasanna Kumar Samuel. It's our honor and privilege to call upon our Bishop and Chairman of the Board of Management of the Goodwill Girls High School and Pre-University College to bring greetings to us. The principal of uh, Goodwills, 
Mrs. Uh, Nyanamani Franklin, the officers of the diocese, members of the board of management, members of the executive committee, the treasurers from different boards of management who are here, ever supportive parents, well wishers, heads of institution, and all the other guests who have been invited this evening, and my dear young girls. From the beginning of this evening, we have been listening to varieties of speeches and the songs and the blessings from your teachers, from your parents, and from the chief guest. And to conclude it all, your young girls were willing to sing this uh, bold number, saying, Christ above all. Whatever happens in our lives, whatever the hurdles that you might face, it is God. When God consciousness is slowly eroding from our culture, the money consciousness, the status consciousness, the power consciousness has come into our country. Here is an institution where God consciousness is coming back into your lives. Whether it was your own colleague or your own student, classmate who was willing to speak up, quoting the Psalms, commit your ways, or the teachers who are willing to sing for you, yet not I, but through Christ in me. And the chief guest reminding us as a medical professional that it is in God that we live. And the life that God has given us is very precious in the sight of God, in the sight of human beings. And how precious we are going to pursue this precious life with the motto and the goal that's been given to us. This evening, kickstart with motivation, get there with discipline is the theme that has been given to the graduating class of 2023. Motivation and discipline are two essential pillars of success. It is both motivation and discipline equally will help you to climb the ladder of success. If motivation is the push, discipline is the staying power. One cannot overrule the other. At the same time, both have to be taken in balance. How do we leverage both? The open secret for this is the ability to wake up and keep pushing every single day. The perseverance that you like to do and the way that you like to persevere helps you that it is not just one day emotionally you want to have a dream and forget about it, but every day in your life you are able to push through the dreams that God has given you to who you want to be in the future that God has kept for you. No matter what happens every single day, you need to remember the motivating factor, whether it is within you or it is outside. As we have entered into 2023, just one month old and few days of uh, February, the graduation, the birthdays, or the new job, all these have become milestone in each of our lives. You arrive at an important phase in your life, maybe chronologically, personally, or professionally. These are the rites of passage all of us go through. These are points of great momentum. So we kickstart with a great deal of enthusiasm. We have finished 10th or we have finished 12th standard or PUC. What next? Someone has already mentioned if one door is closed or as we come to the end of our journey, there is a new beginning from tomorrow. You arrive at an important phase. Well laid plans and you invest your energy. Before you can think of, the steam goes down. People say, motivation does not last. That's why we recommend it, daily zigzagler. Motivation is a kickstart, the key in the ignition. You need to turn on the vehicle if you need to turn on the key and start that vehicle. But sitting idle in park mode is not going to get you anywhere you need to turn on the key. 
someone said which interested me motivation is what gets us out of the bed motivation is the one that gets you out of the bed discipline is what keeps us from going back to the bed because your commitments you have schedules you have so many things you can't just get back to your bed examinations are around the corner the motivation is that i would like to become so and so if that is a situation you need to stay awake and you need to really understand and that discipline helps you to move on the journey of life will have neat clean roads but speed breakers will be there roadblocks might be there diversions might be there there may be traffic jams and accidents and our whole vehicle breakdowns but if you have the discipline if you have the discipline in your toolkit in your car or in your vehicle you can navigate through all of this we call as discipline discipline is a planning all that you will carry in your toolkit discipline is a bridge between goals and accomplishments motivation gets you going and discipline gets you growing it is in that growth and the bible also says it is god who gives you the growth you might have the dreams you might have the motivation you might have all the well played well laid plans but it is god who gives you the growth and you need to recognize that god because he is the creator he is the sustainer he is the one who helped your parents to send you to this institution motivation can come from within the intrinsic the intrinsic value it can be from the external factors the extrinsic value whether it is internal or external we need to understand it is god who gives us that motivation ask yourself these three questions when your motivation goes down get into the habit of asking yourself what do you want to do i even at this point of time i stop for a while and ask myself what exactly you want me to do in a given situation as young as you are as you might be facing many challenges and many roadblocks or many hurdles it's my wish and prayer that you stop for a while you know when you go to the signals you have the you are the green you are the orange and you are the red so the orange prepares you saying that you stop for a while you wait for the green to come so you have to wait for some time and to understand but you know these days are days everything seems to be instantaneous and everything wants to be very instantaneous but you know life cannot be instantaneous and if you need to achieve the goal you need to go through all this process you need to ask yourself in a given situation what is the right thing to do what do you want to do is your motivation what's right for you to do is your discipline so you need to keep the balance of these two when you are being pulled in numerous directions at once it makes you hard to get anything done you get overwhelmed and you lose your focus it is hard for you to have a focal point remember how good you feel remember how you feel when you reach your goal when you finish your workout for example when you reach your ideal weight or clear the competitive exams with honors you are so proud because the motivation was there there was discipline and you are able to achieve whatever you do you need to give it 100% unless you are donating blood apart from donating 100% you cannot donate your blood so apart from donating blood anything else you do 
100% you have to do it. So the secret of discipline is motivation. When you are sufficiently motivated, discipline will take care of itself, said Alexander Patterson. In the Holy Bible, Apostle Paul says, I do not run aimlessly. but I run with my focus. I run with my eyes on Jesus Christ. The price that I need to get. That is the key to discipline. A real belief that the pleasures of a reward will be worth the denial of lesser pleasures in this world. And that's what nourishes our spiritual fruit of self-control in our lives, Galatians 5.23. So dear graduates, this evening, as Apostle Paul says, I do not run aimlessly, but I run with eyes on the price that I need to achieve. I do not want to turn this side or that side, but my aim is to achieve the goal. Go for the price and give it your all and cherish the reward and you'll be able to look back to your alma mater and say with steadfastness I was able to pursue it was not just a kickstart it was also moving forward with motivation and discipline may the God who was able to guide you and lead you thus far will enable you to pursue wherever you go but the basic foundation that you have realized you have gained here will help you to put up the super or put up the edifice, the superstructure, and you will be able to move forward. God bless you, and may this motivation can get wherever you want with the discipline that you need to have. Thank you for inviting me to be part of your graduation 2023. Thank you, sir, for your warmth and enterprise. Now we are moving into the most solemn part of our program. Students, pick up your candles and stand for the candle lighting ceremony. The very essence of leadership is that you have a vision. It's got to be a vision you articulate clearly and forcefully on every occasion. Vision animates, inspires, and transforms purpose into action. Directing our energies towards the fulfillment of this vision is our mentor, the Right Reverend Dr. Prasanna Kumar Samuel, Bishop KCD, and Mrs. Nyanamani Franklin, Principal Goodwill Girls High School and Pre-University College, to lead us in the candle lighting ceremony. And I also request the class teachers of the outgoing students, Mrs. Pramila Jasmine, Mrs. Daphne Jacintha Priya, and Mrs. Helen Christie of Standard 10, and Mrs. Lumen Amal Raj, Mrs. Sharni Raj, Mrs. Girija Virappa, and Mrs. Selva Priya of Second Pre-University to take their positions. Tell the mic guy, I am not yet through. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. This candle symbolizes the light we receive from God. We invite the school leaving pre-university and standard 10 to light their own individual lives from this light and then pass on their light to others to spread the light of truth 
and love in a darkened world. Thank you, Bishop, for passing on the light of goodwill heritage, which will shine like a beacon. As the candles are being lit, the choir will render to us a beautiful melody like a candle flame. Thank you, teachers, for doing the honors. Henry David Toru said that I have learned that if one advances confidently in the directions of his dreams and endeavors to live the life he has imagined, he will meet with success unexpected in common hours. To be successful in life, we shall promise to give our best to translate our abilities into work. Do it with commitment and reap the fruit of hard work. We now have our oath-taking ceremony. We call upon our principal to administer the oath. Dear students, continue standing as you render the oath and repeat after ma'am. Valedictory oath. On my valedictory today, February 8th, 2023. As I stand upon the threshold of my life, I promise to honor my school motto Arise, Learn, Serve, and Be Steadfast. I will carry the good values I have learned. In this, in this institution, I promise, I promise to, spread to spread the flame of knowledge, the flame of knowledge 
and wisdom, and wisdom that, I have that I have received here. Received here. I, promise I promise to endeavor, to endeavor encourage, encourage, empower, empower elevate, elevate, enrich, enrich and, exalt and exalt those younger than me, those younger than me and, support and support those who are older than me. I shall strive hard in my life to love, to share and to serve my fellow beings. May my life be worthy as a citizen of God's kingdom. So help me Lord. Thank you ma'am. Dear students, your education in this institution has empowered you with all that you need. You owe it to us now to promise that you would follow and use them to make this world a better place. The outgoing students will now pledge their hearts and minds to God's glory by singing the pledge song. shining bright and clear and empower others' life you meet along the road of life. May God bless you. Students, please be seated. It is said that gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all other virtues. I call upon Annie Monica, Vice Captain of the High School, to express her words of gratitude on our behalf. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in Acts, was said by Henry Frederick Emil. A very good evening to the August gathering present here today. I, Annie Monica, student of Standard 10, regard this as an honor and privilege to extend my thanks on this special occasion. 
Once, a great man said, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. First and foremost, I thank the Lord Almighty for showering his blessings on this occasion. I extend my gratitude to our Bishop, Right Reverend Dr. P. K. Samuel, Chairman, Board of Management, who has blessed us with his gracious presence and for his valuable insights. The thoughts you have shared will always remain in the hearts of all. I would like to extend my thanks to our chief guest, Dr. Spurgeon, for accepting our invitation and for gracing this occasion in spite of his busy schedule. Your thoughts have truly inspired us, and we are all enthralled by your stimulating and captivating words. I am sure that the students are thoroughly motivated by your pearls of wisdom. I extend my appreciation to the guest of honor, the members of the Board of Management, dignitaries, and guests for their esteemed presence. I offer my sincere thanks to the choir master, Mr. Gladwin, for the time and effort he has spent in training the choir and for their symphonic rendition. A great leader is the one who leads by setting a trail worthy to be followed. I take this opportunity to thank our beloved principal, Mrs. Gnanamani Franklin, for directing us to look and walk in the right path. We can still hear your words tingling in our ears, energizing us to focus on learning more and always be ready for opportunities that may come. We will ever remain indebted to you, and we thank you for your enterprising initiative and dynamism in bringing up our school to greater heights. Your impact on our lives can never be forgotten. Heartfelt thanks to all our teaching faculty who are our second parents, who have always stood by us, guided us, led us, and motivated us. You have always been a great mentor, mediator, resource house, and a moral booster. Thank you for teaching lifetime skills and indispensable knowledge so that we students can stand out and outshine others. Great teachers like you have taught us to be good human beings by being an inspiration yourselves. We, as students, feel proud of you all, and we thank you for your tireless services to this institution. I would like to extend my thanks to our supporting staff. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated supporting staff. I cannot thank everyone enough for their commendable skill and willingness they have expressed to take on the completion of tasks beyond their comfort zones. A big thank you to all the parents out there for their unconditional love and support in shaping our lives with passion and complete positivity. You have been a priceless blessing, and we thank you for believing in us and inspiring us to achieve our dreams. I also thank all the well-wishers for their rock-solid system and encouragement. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude to all my fellow students who have been a part of my life in this life's journey and have helped me sail through difficulties. I just want to congratulate all the graduates with the verse which is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. Thank you all. We recognize the presence of the Degree College Treasurer, Mr. Joel Sumatraj. We welcome you, sir.
O oh, taste and see that God is good to all who seek his face. Yea, blessed is the one who trusts him, confiding in his grace. I now call upon Reverend Christopher Samuel, Assistant Secretary of the CSI KCD, to close in prayer. I request everyone to rise to your feet for the closing prayer. May we look to the Lord in prayer. God of grace and mercy, the source of all wisdom and understanding, we praise and adore you. We believe and acknowledge that you are the author of all sacred beginnings and magnificent transitions. As the class of 2023 stands at the threshold of a new phase, we pray that you will be with all the graduates and provide them with the wisdom and the understanding to move forward. We also pray that they will look back at their time in this blessed institution, the sacred space of learning, and give thanks to you for all the wonderful ways in which they have been molded empowered and inspired to be better human beings. We give you thanks for all the wonderful occasions for learning that they experienced in the classrooms as well as beyond. We give you thanks for all the faculty, both teaching as well as non-teaching, who have played a remarkable role in terms of fashioning these wonderful girls. We also pray that your presence will be with them as they take a bold step into the uncertain future. We pray that you will bless them with patience as they explore new horizons in their lives. We also pray that they will be blessed with humility as they encounter abundance, prosperity, and success. Bless them also with generosity in terms of sharing their gifts and the resources that you have provided to them. And we pray that you will endow them with compassion as they relate with more human beings who are lesser fortunate than them. We also pray that they will always imbibe a spirit of gratitude and will always prioritize you over everything else in their life so that you will be honored and glorified. At this moment, we give you thanks for their parents who have encouraged them and who continue to sacrifice a lot for the betterment of their children's lives. We give you thanks for the principal of this institution and we pray that you will provide her with all the wisdom that she requires as she provides leadership to this institution. We pray that you will keep her safe, secure, and she will be a wonderful person who will have a lasting impact on this institution. We pray for all the staff members, and we pray that you will endow them with your grace so that they will be wonderful assets to this institution. We give you thanks for the inspiring leadership of the bishop, the chairperson of this institution, the Right Reverend Dr. Prasanna Kumar Samuel. We give you thanks for everything that he brings in terms of his leadership, for inspiring us to be better human beings and also to exhibit Christian values in all realms of our living and during all phases of our life experiences. We also give you thanks for Bishop Amma as she continues to partner with him in terms of offering meaningful involvement in the affairs of the diocese. We give you thanks for Dr. Spurgeon and Dr. Rachel as they provide leadership to the Baptist Hospital. We pray that their efforts and their commitment 
will produce the desired result and they will also experience your goodness all the days of their lives. We give you thanks for all those who are present here and we pray that we will continue to be in solidarity with these young girls as they move into their futures. We pray that we will continue to inspire them, encourage them, motivate them and always be concerned about their futures. Be with us, bless us, guide us and lead us. In Jesus Christ, most holy name, we pray. Amen. As we remain standing, I request our Bishop, the Right Reverend Dr. Prasanna Kumar Samuel, to step forward and pronounce the benediction. With faith and confidence, let us receive God's blessings. Unto God's gracious presence, we commit the graduating class of 2023 in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, very specially with the motivation and discipline. They will enter into new realms and they will climb new heights with keeping God in their center. In every step that they go, they might be able to glorify God both now and forevermore. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, remain standing as the dignitaries leave. Dear graduating Goodwillian, your life is your story and the adventure ahead of you is the journey to fulfill your own purpose and potentials. We at Goodwill strive to bring about the best in you and firmly believe that you would shine in flying colors. As Mary Angelo has aptly said, the horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new steps of change. So go confidently, kickstart your motivation and get there with discipline. Congratulations once again. We hope you enjoyed this beautiful service and carry in your hearts memories that will sustain you for the rest of your lives. Thank you. Good night. Students, remain in your places until the dignitaries leave.